Yo, what is up? My name is Ice Grenade and welcome to today's tutorial. Today, we're going to be showing you how to use a simple effect and to play a sound on the triggers in your own GSC scripting. So welcome to this tutorial and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Right. So here we go. We're in game and you'll notice that there is a gold bar there that we just made in Radiant and it says press F to pick up gold. We press F. <laughs> a lot just happened at once. We're actually going to go back and play that in slow motion. Right, it's now a tenth of a second when we press F. <laughs> you can see the effects playing. The effects was playing. It gave us a thousand points and it screamed at us. So stick around. I'm going to show you exactly how you can do this. So the first thing in making a sound is either dragging a sound into Audacity or making one itself. Just for testing, I'm going to make one here. Look at that. <laughs> That will do. Basically, you might want to think about fading it in and fading it out just so that it sounds okay. A lot of times, yeah, that's what you're going to want to do. And also maybe adding a reverb if you if you have it on a radio, you want to add a reverb as well. You might as well just add one. We're going to see what this sounds like. Ah! <laughs> oh God, <laughs> you can add an echo as well. So we're going to add an echo there. Ah! Okay, then <laughs> the next thing is, okay, the next thing is you gotta make sure the project rate is at 48,000 hertz. Set the value down here to 48,000 if it's not already set to that. Okay, the next thing is let's just save the sound. So you're gonna wanna make sure you save it as a WAV Microsoft signed 16-bit PCM. And I'm just gonna save it on the desktop here and we're gonna call it uh, O1 <laughs> and then save. And yeah, make sure that you don't save any metadata because that can screw it up. So don't save metadata with it. Right, so we save that sound. You can use any other sound if you drag it in here and just convert it to 48,000 and to make sure you save it as that file format and it should be a-okay. Right, so we're done with this. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna wanna do is you wanna drag it into your sound file location. So we're gonna grab the file and I'm just gonna cut it and go to your Black Ops 3 root and then go down to where it says sound assets. And you might wanna make a new folder here to collect all your sounds for different maps. In this case, uh, I'm just gonna go with TST, I guess. Actually, I'm gonna put it in the custom folder. Okay, so I'm gonna paste it in here and here we have the R01. Right, okay, so now we wanna go to your user aliases file and add in this as a new record so if you go to your black ops 3 root i highly advise that you put a black ops 3 root in your favorite so you can easily get to it in future then go to your share raw sound aliases and then you should be able to find user aliases csv here if you open that up uh, yours might not look this full you might have never been here before basically we're going to add in a new user alias you should have this test sound tst test sound here we're just going to copy this and we want to you want to make sure you copy all the commas and you've got to be careful that you don't add any or remove any commas so at the end of the line at the very end we're going to press enter go on to a new line and paste so we got two of them now and now we need to give the sound a unique id and this is going to be the id that we use to refer to it in the code okay so i'm just going to call this a01 and i know that's the same with the file name and that's just a coincidence so we're going to change that to r01 wav you've got to make sure that matches the file name and we've got to make sure that we've specified the location which is custom in our case if we go back here we'll see uh, if we go to sound assets that it's in the custom and then it's here r01 so if we go back here we'll see custom r01 by default this is a very very basic sound alias in between all of these commas are different settings that you can use and there's actually some cool programs out there that you can use to open this up and see it in a better view. You could open this up in a spreadsheet as it's a comma separated value file and have it in a table format where you can view everything. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna teach you how to do it here in the text editor. So the 8080 here is the volume. I'm just gonna turn it up to 90, 90. The next thing I'm gonna say is you probably wanna add this to your effects slider. And if you're not using a different program where you can see it, easily then it's only five steps ahead from the UN mod if you go to the end of the D and hit right key five times one two three four five where we are right now is the definition for what slider it's in and you can either write bus music which means in game with the volume setting you're going to have to move the slider for the music up and down to adjust the volume but this is actually an effects so we're going to do bus effects and we're going to save it here and move on to our scripting file okay so let's get started on writing this code 
and we're going to cover how to do these sounds and effects. The first thing to note is that at the top of your GSC file, you're going to have all of these usings and probably inserts and such. But at the bottom of the last using before the main function, here you're going to want to write in your pre-cache for your effects. If you create any custom effects, here is where you'll be declaring them. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're not going to be doing custom effects. We're only going to be using one that's already in the mod tools and doesn't require the pre-caching because it's already pre-cached somewhere else. So that is where you'd want to enter it in and that would be the format that you would use to enter in your own custom effects would be to tell it that it's an effect and then to specify the path to the effect itself but anyway I'm going to comment that out because we're not using it if we scroll down this is the next thing you're going to want to do so here you're going to want to call the function so that it pre-caches in this case we don't need to thread it and once you've added that in we're going to then type in the function here which is function pre-cache effects it's the same name that we just used there and if we go down we have one declaration here which is one of the default effects that we'll be using in this tutorial so if you type in a level full stop underscore effect and then in square brackets and double quotes you want to type in power up underscore grabbed underscore red and this is just a unique id that we're giving for this level effect which is a global effect variable so we can call on it anywhere in the script later on the next part is that we are giving it the path to this effect so here you're going to enter in the path here of zombie forward slash effects underscore power up underscore grab underscore red underscore zmb and then if they are in double quotes that's good and then end it with a semicolon here you'll see that i have commented out a custom effect that i made in radiant and it uses the same format that we just used here but instead i've given it a name of evil door and the effect itself i saved in custom forward slash evil door forward slash barrel underscore fire underscore burst underscore no loop so if you're going to do a custom effect that's the same way you would add it in but we won't be doing it for this tutorial okay scrolling on down here i have made a pretty simple function and i'm just going to walk through it with you guys but just before i do that let's head over to radiant and let's make the objects that we're going to be interacting with today okay so i'm here in radiant and you'll see that we have a few things on the screen so the first thing that I've added in is a model of a stack of gold bars to get that I pressed M on the keyboard to bring up the models browser and started typing in gold underscore bricks and then this model here came up if it's got a reflective texture it will show as black in the preview window here but if you just drag and drop that in your map like so and then level it how you would like i've already done it so i'm going to delete it and then we got it here the next thing i did is i press b on the keyboard like last time and i went to script model and just drag that onto the model and note that we're using a model this time rather than a brush model because we're using a model in this case and we're not creating it using brushes and it works in the exact same way so the next thing is to go to the entity info by pressing n and go down to the target name which in this tutorial we're going to give it a name of gold so once you've done that just press escape to get out of it press b to go back to the entity browser and we're going to be using a trigger use to action this object so i've just dragged in a use here i've already got one if i just select this and we go back to the entity info and we're going to give it its own target name so i go down here and i've given it a target name of gold t because the last time I explained, I like to use a suffix of T on any time that I'm using triggers. You might wish to call it something else like gold underscore trigger or whatever you feel makes most sense to you. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to call it gold T. Okay, so that is it today for the Radiant. If you save this and you can close it down and we'll head back over to the GSE file. Okay, so we're back here. And the first thing to do is we're going to want to scroll up and just add a new function here called thread pick up gold and you'll see that I have already created it right here so I've got two now I'm just going to delete the one that I just made so if yeah if you've written thread pick up gold that is good let's go down and we're going to write this function out so here you're going to want to write function space pick up gold and it should auto complete for you if you've set the gsc setting and if you haven't got this then you need to go check out lesson one because we explain how to do that and then in here we're going to set up the different entities that we made here we've set up the gold entity this is the model itself set up in the exact same way that the brush model is set up as well so gold equals get ent the name of it we called it gold and that is the target name that we're referring to that's us declaring the gold model and then we need 
to declare the gold trigger as a variable here's the gold t equals get end gold t target name so we've set up the model and we set up the trigger and the next thing is setting up the hint string so here we're setting up the hint string gold t set hint string and we, we're saying press f or whatever device they're using it will change to the f or x or whatever to pick up gold the next thing is here we've got the remove hand icon and this is all explained in lesson three and we'll go down here where we are using a wait till to wait for people to trigger the gold trigger and here's where it gets a little bit interesting because what we're doing is we're saying okay well we're going to wait for them to trigger it and then we want the object to delete so we want players to pick up the gold and here we're doing that gold delete so that will just delete the object as if it never existed and then we come down here and it says play effects and this is how we are going to set it up so i'm going to type it with you you're going to want to write play effects and then in brackets we're going to add two parameters the first parameter is the name of the effects that we used earlier and you can either type this out or you could just scroll up and just copy what we've written earlier so you can just grab that control c go down here and paste it in here then comma and we want to add in the second parameter and the second parameter is expecting is where do we want to play the effects in the game you can specify any sort of location you like you could enter in some specific values within the space itself or oh, you want it to spawn at zero 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 or you could do something like okay well we got the gold model and we want to spawn it on the origin and and that's where we want to spawn it but we've already deleted the object so if you want to do that you probably want to delete the object after because if the object doesn't exist then this will probably error but playing the effect before you can actually use the origin of that model one thing to note is that this variable here we've declared as the model and by writing full stop here there are a whole lot of things that you can write in you can grab the origin of the entity that you've declared or you could grab pretty much anything else if we go here and we have a look here we've got target name we've got angles we've got the color most of these values can be grabbed from writing in a property here and in this case we want to use the origin because that specifies where the object is in space so we've got the values here 118.5 negative 16 and 8 and instead of writing in those numbers ourselves, we can just type in gold origin what i had done already is i just done it on the trigger itself so instead of playing the effect on the model you could play it on the trigger but you want to play the effect on the origin of an object before you delete it if you delete it and that's the next thing if you want to delete an object you can type in gold t for example so if we want to delete the trigger after we're done with it and finish it like that we're going to call this function delete which will delete an entity and we're calling it on that object which in this case is the trigger so this code is going to reference these entities here the model and the trigger and it's going to set the trigger up and then we're going to be waiting for the trigger and then what's going to happen is once it's been triggered it will play an effect and then it will delete the gold model and delete the trigger and because there are no weights between the deletion and the playing effects it will act like it happens at the same time so that's all great but what if we want to add in the sound so we can do that as well there are a few different ways of setting up sound but for the sake of this tutorial we're just going to set it up simply using a normal 2d sound so here we're going to call it on the player object we're going to type in player and then we're going to type in play sound and this is going to call a function where it plays a sound but we need to tell it what sound we want to play so if we go back to the user alias we called it ah oh one <laughs> so if we go back now we're going to want to specify the name in double quotes that we we want it to play that ah sound when you've triggered it and that's what it will do i will add in one more quick thing but i'm not going to cover it properly in this tutorial is we can actually add to the player's score simply by doing player.score plus equals and then a value and that will just add a hundred points to the player score well, let's make it a thousand actually but i'll have to explain this another time because the player needs to be declared so we'll talk about that in another tutorial but anyway if you want to add to the player score that's how you do it you type in player score and then it will give it to the specific player that actioned the trigger so let's save this and we'll go check it out in game one little thing I need to put in right here is I made a tiny little typo. You want to make sure that when you type in origin, you spell it right. I missed the little I there. So yeah, ignore that it's spelled wrong. Sorry. 
So here we go. We're in game. It says press F to pick up gold. We press F. <laughs> a lot just happened at once. So we're actually going to go back and play that in slow motion. Right. It's now a tenth of a second when we press F. <laughs> You can see the effects playing. The effects was playing. It gave us a thousand points and it screamed at us from the sound clip we made earlier. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know how it was in the comments. Don't forget to smash a like and yeah, let me know what you want to see next. Other than that, take it easy guys. Stay freezy and I'll catch you on the next one. Right, see ya. Die, you son of a bitches. Slow motion is so awesome. Pop the reload. Oh god. Oh god. God damn it. Reload that fucking gun already. Get it loaded. Really appreciate some good animations in slow motion. Die. Die. I wonder what round I could get to in slow motion. I reckon you could get to like round. I don't know.